dear follower of Geometric Tutorials. This program is specifically for Atlantis 2020 version and any version above 2020. The focus of this program is on how to achieve the best rendering settings for Atlantis 2020 or any version above Atlantis 2021. Have you ever done your designs and you wish to achieve your models, that is, you wish to achieve a rendered picture that looks bright and neat like this, or you want to achieve something that looks like this? Do you see how neat this picture is? Let's scroll, let me show you other beautiful pictures, can you see this? Do you see how neat this picture looks like? Do you see how neat this rendering looks like? Have you ever wondered how to achieve a very neat, perfect setting that gives you something that looks close to what we have here on the screen? Now, I am going to show you how to achieve that. There is also another picture here that I want to show you. Do you see this? This is an interior view of a sitting room done with Atlantis. Now, this, there is no process rendering here. This is simply, this is 100% Atlantis rendering. Now, have you ever desired to achieve a neat picture like this? Well rendered, neat, and clear picture like this. Have you ever desired it? Now, I'm going to show you how to achieve the settings that will give you a rendered picture that looks neat like this. Now, let's go. Now, I'm going to open one of my drawings here and uh, show you how to go about the setting. First, I have in my system uh, Atlantis 2020. Let us open Atlantis 2020. Be patient as Atlantis 2020 opens. Now, Atlantis 2020 has just opened. Let me go straight to this uh, Atlantis icon here. Click on it so that I can import a model that I want to render. And I import here. Okay, I have SketchUp document. Let me search for, okay, I have here, render to, okay. This drawing is done with SketchUp 2020, but reduced to version 2013. And it is openable by Atlantis 2020. So I'm going to open it with Atlantis. Let's import it, import. Exercise patient as it imports. Beautiful. It has just opened. Now, once it opens, the first thing you do, once it opens like this, is you just go to this figure here where you have your focal, focal. type 37 there. Then check this uh, camera on. Having checked it on, then the next place you move is you move straight to this place where you have edit the rendering parameters. Click on it. Let's go straight there. Choose your rendering size. Always go for full HD. Click on it. Then your desired DPI. I will advise you, you can go for 100. You can go for any value above 100. Let's use 100, 100 here. Then anti-aliasing. Check this anti-aliasing on and uh, scroll down and pick fix rate 4. Click on it. Then under your ambience here, click on it and choose exterior because you are rendering exterior, uh, exterior picture of a building. So check it on, click choose the exterior. Then you come to settings here. In this settings, you have custom, you have quality, you have medium, you have speed. You always make use of this speed if you want to render these pictures fast without wastage of much time. You make use of speed. If you are interested in quality, more quality, uh, that is a quality picture, you pick this, you go for this. Medium is good. Quality is also good. Even the speed is also good. It's good. But there will be this slight difference between a picture rendered with speed and a picture rendered with quality, but not too noticeable. It takes one who is making use of the uh, software to identify it. Ordinary person or a layman may not even identify the difference between the picture you rendered with speed and the one you rendered with their quality. So for now, pick speed. I will come to quality later. Choose speed. Check it on. And this ambient occlusion has to do with artificial shadow. If you want to cast artificial shadow on your building, that is you check it on. But for now, I want to, I will advise you to ignore it. Then you come to this, your ISO. Check this value, type 250 there. Then reduce this one to 475. 475. Then under this, your white balance, take it on. Now, do not check this uh, denoiser on. Ignore it. Having done this few settings that I've just done now, click on set as default, then click OK and exit. Then the next thing you do is you increase this preview window size by clicking at this point, increase preview size. Click on it first, click again so as to widen it to its maximum size. Beautiful. Then open this your 2D view. This is 2D view. Click on it to open so that you can position your camera the way you want it to be. Take this, uh, this uh, focal 
and drop, move it to this building, center of the building, then drag the camera closer. Beautiful. The idea is for me to see this building whole and as well as see the top. Then click on this uh, display front view, click on it, so as to bring this footer up in a way you can see the cloud as well. Beautiful. Then drag this camera down because it's too tall, it's above the height of the fence. Move it down. Move it down. Move it down a bit. That is it. Now, having done this, check it back to your display top view. Click on it again and make sure that it is positioned properly well. Okay, let's drag this camera backward a bit so that we can see more of the top of the building. Beautiful. Then exit this your 2D view. Exit it. Now you can see part of your sky, the top of your building. And if you move this bar down, you can also see the ground of this building. That done. Now, once you have done these first, uh, steps, click on save. Click on save. Click at this spot. It will demand for where you want to save it. Uh, actually, I'll have to choose a folder. I'll have to click on here. Let me search a folder in my desktop or click on my desktop here. Or I may add it. Let me add a folder in the desktop there. New. Let me just type it in. Name, uh, new product. New product. Or new sketch. Let me just type it. New sketch. And then open it. Inside it, I will save it and click my save. It has just saved, uh, this, uh, uh model inside this, uh, folder. Now, at this stage, what comes to your mind is what to do to make the outlook of this building in this area to look right. Now, very many users of Atlantis would want to clear this uh, model and make this area of this area of this model to look bright. And to do that, they will always use uh, this method. Like they click on this open 2D view. The 2D view will now open. Now, in this 2D view, they will go to Heliodon. When the Heliodon opens, you see the sunlight. They now move this sunlight. You see? Now move the focus of this sunlight towards the building. You see it? Now the sun is focused in front of the building. They are by throwing each light on the front of this building, making it look bright. Close here. This is one method they use to brighten this um, uh, building. But I want you to understand something. It is not always a must you make use of it. Now, the sun light does not always focus in the front of the building. Have you ever asked yourself, what about a situation whereby the sun is focused at the back of the building and the camera and you, the cameraman, is standing in front of the building? What does the front of the building look when the sun is at the back? Like when the sun is at the back towards this side. How does the area, this area of the building look like when the sun is at the back? Must the sun always be focused in the front for this area to look bright? So this is one way. Very many users of Atlantis used to brighten the facade of their building. But I want to show you something. You don't always have to make use of this method. Hmm? You have to make your design realistic, as realistic as possible. You mustn't always follow that method. Now, I want to show you how to make your building, the facade, this area, look bright even when the sun is focused at the back. Now, we are going to move the sun away, back to the back of this building. Let's go back to our 2D view. And I'll tell you, this is the sun. We are going to move it away from the front of this building and position it where it is previously. Now the sun is somewhere here. Good. It is no longer focused in the front of the building. Let us see what it looks like. Let the screen clear. When the screen clears, we'll see what it looks like. So this is what the screen looks like when the sun is focused in another direction. Now I want to show you how to make this place look bright even when the sun is not focused in the front. Now having it this way, what you do in this your Heliodon is go to your cloud. First, we have to set cloud because the sky has not assumed its natural look. Go to the cloud here. Then activate the cloud. In activation of the cloud, move this uh, cyrocumulus down to zero. See what I'm doing? Move this uh, cyrus to 100. Leave this one at 60. You can leave this one at 20. Then this pollution, you can leave it at 20 as it is. We'll come to it later. Click OK. Let's observe what the front of this building looks like. How does it look like now? It seems like it's assuming a little bit of brightness. Good. Then go to this uh, sky and increase the sky intensity, sky value to 50. Type in 50, enter, and observe as this place brightens. 
let's observe let's observe it how does it look like allow the system to settle it looks very very bright even though the sun is not focused in the front of the building it looks very bright so bright that even the sky itself is over bright now what i want to show you is how to reduce the brightness of the sky while you still maintain the brightness of this outlook here having done this do not increase the value of the sun leave it at zero just only this sky value at 50. that's okay click back on your cloud then come to this spot i want to show you something about this pollution now watch what happens the moment i move the value of this position uh, this pollution to 100. observe watch what happens there watch what happens let the system pierce what do you observe it seemed like part of the visibility of this front is now more pronounced it's now more pronounced that is the outlook the outlook of this model looks brighter whereas the value of the sky the value of the sky is reduced now let's move the value of this pollution down to zero and see what happens We have moved the value of the pollution down to zero. Let the screen clear. And let's take our observation. What do you observe? What do you observe? By moving the value of this pollution down to zero, the building is no longer bright as it is before. It's no longer bright as it is before. Therefore, what do you do? Increase the value of pollution. Set it to 75. Set it to 75. Type 75, enter. Beautiful. Then click OK. Observe your model again. Observe your model again. It looks bright. It looks very bright. But the challenge now is the over brightness of the sky. What you do to trim down the over brightness of the sky so that it blends well with this uh, model, the brightness of the model. Go back to this cloud again click on this cloud then in this mix color now in this uh dialog box now look at what you do look at mix sky color check it on now that you check it on click on that color there click on it so that it brings out this box now move this cross move this cross down and observe what happens to the sky as i move it down observe what happens to the sky What are you observing? If I move, let me move it down to zero. Do you see what happens to the sky? Let me move it up again. Okay, let me move it down to zero and leave. Let us, let us see what the model looks like. Let the screen clear. Let's take note of our observation. Beautiful. What do you observe? Your model is still looking bright even when the sky is dark. So this is where you control the strength of the sky while you maintain a bright model. So let's go back to this place and increase and uh, move this bar upwards so that the sky will assume its natural color look. While you are moving this bar up, take a look at the cloud. Just look out through the window of your office or your place and see what the cloud looks like. What does the cloud look like? move this bar up to the setting of what the cloud you have in your environment looks like like in my environment here the cloud the limit of the brightness of the cloud is this so at this point i will stop and then let the system clear so that we'll see what my model looks like beautiful beautiful now if i still feel like the building looks too bright over bright then i'll go back to this pollution and reduce the value of this pollution a bit 69 68 65 64 63 60. let's leave it at 60. let me observe my model again and see what it looks like
how do you see that it still looks very bright then what i have to do is i have to trim down the sky again around it so that it will blend very well because it's becoming difficult to differentiate between the white this white paint and the cloud so let me go back to this place and reduce it and reduce the bar down a bit Let's allow the system to clear again. What I'm showing you is how to tune your design to get the best of result. Now, let me trim down the pollution again a little bit. Let me leave it at 40. Let me observe it again. At 40, let's observe it. Beautiful. This is okay. We are not going to trim down further. Then just click OK. Just click OK. Then go to this sky and reduce the brightness of this sky a little bit. I just did it 48. Let me re reduce it to 45. Let's observe the model again. Let's see what it looks like. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Now, with this, you see how to achieve a bright, a bright facade, even when the sun is focused at the back of this building. If you feel like it is still too bright again, we can trim down this uh, sky power. Trim it a bit down. Okay, let's stop at, let me just, let's stop at 30 and see what 30 value looks like. Stop at 30. Let's see what it looks like. Good. 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 Now, we have naturally bright uh, facade of a building, even when the sun is not focused in the direction of the facade we are looking at. Now, the sun is focused on the other side, whereas this area is bright. If we are to bring the sun to focus, in this uh, front part of the building, it will be over bright. But with this, now we have a bright cloud. If you feel like the cloud is not bright enough to your test, you go back here and increase this value so that the whiteness of the sky will increase. Let me stop at this value. Okay, click my okay. Take note of the figures we have here 100, 20, 60, 0, 40. And here I control the strength, the whiteness of the cloud. Now take a look at my model. My model is bright. My sky is, light, uh, is bright and everything looks neat, even without concentrating the sun in the front of this building. Click my OK and then click on my save. Beautiful. Now, click on perspective. Let me show you one thing about here. It did push process parameter. This is for setting of push process parameter. Click on it. Now, this particular spot, usually when you have challenge, making your model look bright you come here and increase the brightness but there is no point in increasing the brightness here because already here this place looks bright and neat so you don't touch this area except where you have challenges making it bright that is when you come here to brighten and remember when you increase the brightness here the brightness of the building will increase and the brightness of the cloud will also increase as well so but what i've just shown you is how to increase the brightness of your building without tampering with the brightness of the sky but this area this post process we will not just increase the brightness of the building, it will also increase the brightness of the sky. That is why I don't advise you to go to this area for now. Click OK, exit it. So take a look at your model. We have not even done any edi um, editing on the uh, materials, the shaders here, but our model is already looking bright. Now, as for editing of the materials of this model, that is not part of the subject we have here, except in our subsequent tutorial, I will show you how to edit the materials here. But with this, you have a well bright and neat uh, model outlook, which if you, if by the time you finish editing of this, uh, these are uh, shaders and you click render uh, to render, the building will come out fine. Now, let me go to the rendering. Let me go to rendering. First of all, I'll have to change the name of this particular picture. I'll double click here and type in, let's say view one, view view 
V1. Let's say V1. And click enter. So that's the name of this place. So I'll now click on my start rendering. The moment it appears, I'll check what speed. I want it to render with speed. I want to show you what a rendered image that is done with this setting. Where you leave this particular settings in speed, what it will look like compared when we change it to when we change it to quality. I'll render with speed and I'll also render with quality and show you their time difference. So let's go with speed now. You don't adjust anything here. Like I said, this is exterior rendering. So let's click OK. Render now. The system has begun to render. Exercise patience as it does is rendering. Beautiful. Now the rendering has just finished. Close. Now let's change the name here by typing into because we are going to render it with a different setting. Let's go to our settings here and change it from speed to quality. Let's click OK. Allow this blinking light here to stop. Once it stops, we we'll start rendering. Now it has stopped blinking. So let's click on our render. Render. The previous one completed its rendering in 2 minutes and 58 seconds. Let's see how many minutes it will take this one to finish. Beautiful. Can you see it has just finished rendering? Now, can you see the time it took this particular setting to render? Five minutes and six seconds. While the previous setting rendered in two minutes and 58 seconds. Let's close this. Let's start for those two pictures and see if we can identify any difference between both pictures. Let's minimize this. Let's search for the folder where we have it. Okay, look at it here. New SK. This is V1. This is V2. Let's open the pictures. This is your V1. This is your V2. Can you identify any difference between this V2 and uh, V1? What do you observe here? Take a look at this window. Take a look at this window. Take a look at this window glasses. Do you see what it looks like? Now, let's go to V2 and see what those glasses look like. You see, it seems like these glasses look clearer. They look clearer than they are in v1 you see what it looks like in v1 you see what v1 looks like and this is v2 do you see now take a look at the sharpness of these lines sharpness of these lines in v2 let's check it in v1 and see what they look like you see that the lines are sharp but it seems like they are blurry look at these blurry areas look at this blurry area look at these blurry areas these are v2 now we are going to render this same, we are going to render this picture again with a different setting. We are going to change to the top setting. We used quality here. This is medium. We use speed and quality. From this, you can see that quality, quality setting is better than speed setting. Speed will give you the rendering in a shorter time. Whereas quality will consume a little more of your time, more of your time, but it will produce a very neat uh, outlook of your model. So, what is important here is achieving a bright facade of your building. Every other thing as regards to what to do to your shaders, how to change shaders, we'll be doing that in our next class. But for now, 
I hope you have learned how to adjust the settings of your rendering and machine in order to obtain a very bright model outlook as you have like this. I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial. Thanks for watching.